Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place cares for children from all corners of the country. A home from home, offering hope at times of uncertainty and strength in times of need. Inviting us into their world, we witness difficult decision-making, life-changing surgery, and powerful success stories. In the emergency department, we never know what's going to come through the door next. Theatre staff have to be ready for surgery at any given time. I see you treat critically ill children 24-7. Following the journey of families and their children, undergoing vital and life-saving treatment, welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. because of my cliff palate. So I'm going to get some work done tomorrow. I had a surgery done before. It was nine years ago, and I can't remember it. <laughs> we'll just be coming to Okay, perfect. He was born with a complete unilateral cleft lip and palate. His first surgery was when he was three months old, and he had his lip repaired. His second surgery was when he was nine months old, and he had his palate repaired. He has already had his palate repaired and his lip repaired. When you do that, you leave a gap in the two parts of the gum that come together. He has quite a substantial hole in his gum that needs to be um, bridged in order for teeth to grow. So hopefully that will be done tomorrow and then his teeth can grow and face will form correctly then. The medical name for the gum is the alveolus. Alveolar bone grafting has to be done when the secondary dentition is coming through. In other words, your permanent teeth. So you have to wait, and it varies from child to child. Uh, little girls are usually ready sooner than little boys, and uh, at about nine, you might do it in some patients. It might be as late as 12 or even 13 in other patients. It depends on their dental maturity. As part of a routine procedure, Josh gets a blood sample taken ahead of his surgery tomorrow. First come on in. Perfect. Can you go on in there? Have you had a blood scan before? No. No, this is the first time to have a blood scan? It did, Josh, but you were young. Blood. Yeah, you were blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, do you want to pull up the sleeves? Oh, okay. Josh, I have a strap here. I'll put it around your arm, it will be a little bit tight, okay? Yeah. And I'm gonna clean your arm and gonna spray your arm with a cold spray. The spray is really, really cold, just like the weather today. Yes. <laughs> so I can see how big your muscle is. I want you to keep your arm still. Don't put your arm, don't pull your arm, don't touch my hand, okay? Yeah. Like old mommy said, are you alright? Ah, he'll be a brave boy, okay. He is brave. Now, a small pinch, Josh. Okay, that's okay. okay. Oh, yeah, the first part is over, Josh. Okay, I know. On the day board, 10-year-old Kira Riley has arrived. First of all, when she was sore, I thought maybe it was a kidney infection. We were with our GP twice before, so then we, we were referred then to another doctor, and scans were done, and um, then it came to light that she had a hernia. It was a bit of a fright, and I didn't know anything really about um, hernias. Kids are much different to hernias in adults. In adults, it's usually a muscle weakness where some heavy lifting or vigorous activity or certain sporting activities, you can get a hernia. Whereas in kids, it's something you're born with. So Kira's hernias have been there ever since she was born. It's a little space that hasn't closed over in her groin. But sometimes they only come to light uh, when you're a bit older, when something pops out into them, when you're doing an activity that might increase the pressure in your abdomen. I thought it was uh, something like just a lump or a growth. I didn't realise that it was kind of like a hole in the lining of your stomach 
and it's your stomach or part of your internal organs that can come out, which is the, the lump that you see. It can come out any time when you're just lying around and it could be sore. Sometimes it could be ache but not sore and sometimes it could be not even ache and sore and then most of the time it's out and it's really sore. She had um, a hernia operation last year. So when this one came out, say late October, we knew exactly what it was. So this is her second. She loves doing exercise and she loves being outdoors. And um, at least when it's done, it won't stop her from doing anything. The hope would be it would be gone and that, that means I can um, do athletics without or any other stuff without it being sore and I'll have to stop so. 13-year-old Alex Martin had tonsillitis late last year. Since then, he's been experiencing issues with his skin, and today he's hoping to address them. When I first saw like appearing on my body, I thought it was just spots. But then uh, loads of them started appearing on my body, and I didn't know what to do. Just what spots kind of, popping up on me. The first time he was getting the spots, he didn't want to do PE. He's very self-conscious of people looking at him and it being itchy and aware of it. People would just like look at me when I'm walking by. They think that I have like the chicken pox or something. I'm pretty annoyed I still have it because I just want to like, have normal skin. Soon after they arrived, Alex is seen in the resuscitation room. Can you tell me why you brought Alex into the department today? Um, we went in the doctor's this morning because he has a rash since October on and off and he wrote a note and said come on in and see what they say. We originally thought he was allergic to penicillin but that was in October. That was in October. So he thinks there might be something else there as well. So the rash started after getting an antibiotic for penicillin? The day after. Okay. We had the antibiotic for a week, finished it and we saw his tummy the next day spots arrived. We've been up to the doctor about three times. We got cream first. Okay. Didn't do anything. He gave us steroids. And then he went on to Dertocortal, which is the prednisolone. So he went on to the oral steroids? Yes. Okay. And he's been taking those yes. since. So this all happened after a viral infection for his tonsillitis. Uh, tonsillitis. Yes, Quincy tonsillitis. Okay. Can I see the rash? Is oh, that of course possible? you can. Do any kind of silvery scales come on it? No. No. It started off on the tummy, but the back is the worst. As you can see, it kind of starts off in spots and then it gets into a rash. Okay. Is and it on his legs? Yeah, top of the legs. Okay. How about behind over. his knees on his... Um, no. It's a little bit on your kneecaps here. Um, I'd say now that would be the rash. Scratch. I'm scratching it. Scratching. Okay. And it's the same on the other on one? On the other one, yeah. I'm going to just have a, a discussion with my consultant and let him see this rash. When did it, when did it appear again? Um, last Saturday it started to appear and it's getting worse. Is it her. itchy? Um, sometimes, yeah. Not really. No. You can see it, it's um, very prominent and very red and you can have these little salmony color uh, spots or uh, and plaques and they're small and there's something like they give a bit of um, scaling into them and affecting all his body. It's all on the trunk and, and sometimes affect the arms and it's unfortunately for him slightly affecting his face. Good. Can I have a look in? Yeah, that's great. You have the brace in place and yeah. all the rest. And you close your teeth together like that. Fantastic. So it's that side, is it? Yeah. It's, it's not. Oh, well. It's this side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. At least we know what we're doing. We look after you. Yeah, all right? thank you. gets harder. As he gets older, it gets harder for us. It's vital he has this because if he doesn't, he has, he's left with a hole in his gum and his teeth won't form correctly and thus his face won't form correctly. So this is vital. He has to have it. He has no choice. If he didn't have the bone graft done, the gum 
would tend to always drift slightly. The teeth would be very disarrayed around it and it would be impossible for an orthodontist to do proper brace work to move the teeth into the right alignment. So the whole reason for today's operation is to put in extra bone to fill that alveolar gap so that the new teeth, his second teeth, can grow in and become part of a solid dentition. Before the bone grafting is done, the orthodontist will first of all tell me what teeth might need removing at the time of operation, but he will also help align the two bits of the alveolus together. What we have to do first in this procedure is we open out the gap, we define where the bony gap is, and then we raise a flap of tissue inside that will cover over the gap once we put the bone graft in. The second stage of the operation is to actually harvest the bone graft from what everyone calls the hip, what medically is called the iliac crest, and you harvest some of the bone from that and place it up into the gap, and then you close the gap. Where you harvest it from on the iliac crest, you cover that carefully, you bend the bone back over to where it was, so there shouldn't be any long-term contour defect or anything. He's great. He tolerated the procedure very well. The surgery itself, the, the nuts and bolts of surgery takes in around an hour, but Josh will have been in the recovery room afterwards, so he'd be missing from his family's side for about two to three hours. Most children recover very, very quickly post-surgery. The next day they are quite swollen and a little bit stiff and a little bit black and blue, and once they're prepared for that, it's not so much of a shock for them. I'm just relieved he's back. We're ten years, like, waiting to get here, so... Yeah. He's done now and he's back in one piece, so that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Thank God. In theatre, Kira is preparing for her surgery. I really feel nervous. She was just very nervous and anxious, but she was okay. Um, I was with her until she went to sleep, so um, everything was fine. Normally it's picked up in the first few years of life, so Kira is quite old, but it's, it's not impossible for kids to present at a later stage, but it's much more common to notice this swelling when kids are younger. In the surgery I just made an incision down in the groin after she was obviously anaesthetised and given a general anaesthetic and the anaesthetist also gave a local anaesthetic injection using an ultrasound to guide them. Once I opened the skin then I was able to find where this outpouching of tissue was coming out of her inguinal canal that's down in the groin. And once I found that I looked inside it made sure there was no contents in it because in girls sometimes an ovary can pop out into the hernia. In boys, it's more common for a piece of bowel to push out into the hernia. And once I had the hernia sac freed up, then I was able to tie it off to prevent anything else coming out of it. And she goes to recovery, and there they, they wake her up slowly and carefully, make sure that she's not sick, that she's not sore, that she's fully wide awake um, and recovered from her anaesthetic. And once she is, she goes back down to the ward. Earlier today, Alex presented to A&E with a flaring rash. Upon a visual examination, his skin condition appears to be psoriasis. But until a dermatologist can confirm this, Alex will remain undiagnosed. It all comes up actually after normally infection and after uh, exams, stress, and that's the reason why we need to work on all these things, you know. Okay. So that will. So it just basically came up because he had the tonsillitis. Yeah. So if he's ever sick again, can he have penicillin? He can have penicillin. Okay. Yeah, he should be all right. Yeah. We don't see that often in, in, in children, but sometimes it does start in, in, in childhood. Upon the quest of the dermatology clinic, Dr. Ryan takes a throat swab, which will be sent to the laboratory for testing. It tickles a little bit, but it doesn't hurt. 
something for you guys? At least I don't have to get bloated again. Yeah, yeah, so worry now, <laughs> take Ali's blood. <laughs> I am going to give him the uh, appropriate medication, which is starting a course of steroids. And after that, I'm going to send him to the dermatology clinic. I, I don't know how quick the appointments would be, but he's gone off on his school tour on the 23rd of March. So is there any chance we could have... Yeah, hopefully we can clear it up before you go. We never realised that you could just suddenly appear with psoriasis like that. You know, I always thought it came in little clumps. Obviously it doesn't. Nice. Would psoriasis come like yeah, that? Yeah, it can do. Because I thought it comes in it, the elbow it and It does, the but if it's a bad psoriasis, it can be everywhere. I think he's more worried that he's going to end up like this when he goes off for his school tour. That's his biggest thing now, because he's hoping to go swimming and stuff, and he won't when he's like this. So. I hope he will make it, because that's going to be very tough for him just to be that flair and I'm sure his friends gonna ask him oh, what's that and is it uh, contagious which is not it is not a contagious disease psoriasis it is a lifelong disease management of psoriasis it's like it goes into two domain is the education of parents how they're gonna treat for a very long life uh, disease which is gonna come and go often how to apply creams what is it the disease when they need to present back to uh, Healthcare, and the other one is actually the medication for this, which is uh, based on uh, steroids as a baseline with any other agents as well. I would say in a couple of weeks it should be all right. Having returned to the day ward, Kira is recovering from surgery. She's just back from having her surgery, and it looks like everything went well, and um, a bit sleepy at the moment, but. She'd be grand. Kira was up in theatre for approximately 40 minutes. Um, she came back to us and she's doing great here on the ward. We're just taking her observations, her vital signs, and making sure she's comfortable from a pain point of view. She's a little bit sore. They did give her painkillers when she came out of the operation, so a um, little bit sore, but it's easing off now. She'll be kept an eye on in the ward for a few hours to make sure that, again, she doesn't have any after effects of either the surgery or the anaesthetic. She'll need pain medicine for a few days, usually three to five days of painkillers. There will be some bruising and swelling there, but that tends to settle down over the next one to two weeks. She has a dressing on that will need to come off in a few days, but all the stitches and sutures dissolve themselves. And we tend to use a lot of glue on skin nowadays. That's a quicker, easier way of, of getting the skin together, and it works very well. Um, she has a little wound on her groin, so it just has to keep that area dry for five days and then she can take that off and have her bats back after five days. She'll need to take it easy for maybe two or three weeks. More to do with making sure the wound heals and that she doesn't hurt herself. Sporting activity won't make this hernia come back. If it's going to come back and all hernias can come back, then it would tend to happen um, whether she does the activities or not. But she will limit herself to, to whatever doesn't hurt her. Usually the first few days are when the pain might be present, but after that it generally settles down fairly quickly. I'd say we'll be going home maybe in the next hour or so. Um, she'll have to get a, a little bit to eat, and once she can eat and it's sitting in her stomach okay, we'll be away. I'll see her back in my clinic in the next few weeks to make sure everything's healing up okay. She'll be glad to go home to go to sleep. She's just very tired. But apart from that, she's fine and everything went well. Three days since surgery, Josh is recovering well. He came back from surgery on Tuesday evening and um, he was sort of in and out of the anaesthetic was wearing off slowly but surely. I was sore after it. Yesterday morning he was very swollen and he was in pain. His hip um, started to become inflamed. So we were a little concerned about that, but he's, he's okay again. So today, all of a sudden, he's after parking up. I feel a bit better. I went for a walk to the playroom. Yeah, and he had to walk up two flights of stairs, so he did really well. I'm looking forward to going home because I won't have to get any needles in my hand or anything like that done. 
The advice given on discharge to Josh would be, firstly, his diet. He'll be on soft diet for a week or two, and then he'll have to be very careful to avoid biting or crunching down on very hard foods. The second advice we give is that they maintain a good oral or dental hygiene, that he continues to brush his teeth, take plenty of water, and that'll help with infection once a new grafted area takes. And the third thing then is about activity, and this is where most little boys in particular get a little bit upset because we ask them to refrain from um, contact sports and certain physical activities like football, rugby, riding a bicycle for a couple of weeks and that's just to give the bone graft time to recover and to knit in place. I'm taking a break for six weeks. I'm going to be an assistant manager. We have to come back here again in six weeks time to meet Mr. Early and he'll check his uh, wound and if everything is okay he can go back to playing soccer and doing all the things he loves to do. So in the meantime he has to take it easy. For the future now, what's in front of him is the orthodontic treatment and at some stage, further correction of the nose from a cosmetic and an airway point of view. It's been a long week, but um, I, I just didn't want to go until he was fully, fully better and he seems to be on the road to recovery. But uh, yeah, it's been a long week, but it's all over now, so it's, it's great.